Now I'm very excited to introduce our keynote speaker at, for this evening. He is the Chief Education Evangelist at Google. Jamie collaborates with school systems, educational organizations, and leaders focused on building innovation into our education policies and practices. In addition to his role at Google, Jamie serves as an advisor to dozens of organizations. He actually helped launch the Phoenix Coding Academy, an awesome public high school in Phoenix, and he also guest lectures at ASU. He gives career advice on his YouTube videos, which is the link provided to you in the slides. So definitely feel free to check it out after the event. Jamie, first of all, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your story, and I'll pass it on over to you. Thank you very much. So at this point, I am assuming that someone's going to flip me over so that you can see me. Um, okay, so while that happens, I will, uh, I, I, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. So Thank you very much for having me. I'm excited to be here. I wanted to kind of start by saying that I'm a Sun Devil. I graduated from graduate school back like in the olden days, back in 1993. I also have a 27 year old who's a ASU alumni. And I have a 19 year old who is home right now, but attending Arizona State University right now. And I need you to take him back please. This is not what I signed up for. Anyway, I wanted to start by telling you kind of where we are today. I, I know people are freaking out. I know there's a lot of people are worried about what does the economy look like. I know a lot of people are worried about kind of what, how to network, how to do those things. And I think we should look at this as an opportunity, right? I think we should look at this as a way to think about um, what the time that we have and what we can do with it, right? So a lot of you out there have been asked, you know, especially if you're just recent grads or whether you are like switching careers or whatever, wherever you are, you've been asked your whole life, what do you want to be when you grow up? And that question used to make sense back in the olden days, you know, a long time ago when, when, it, when, it, when jobs didn't change that much, when things were much more stable. Well, today we know that that's not true. Jobs are shifting. Jobs are shifting right now, right in front of us. And so what we need to think about is a new question. And the question I want everyone to think about is what problem do you want to solve? What's the problem that spins in your head? And it doesn't have to be a social problem. It could be any kind of problem. It could be if you watch, if you watch Shark Tank, everyone who walks into that tank is solving a problem. So What's the problem that you want to solve? And then the second question that you should be thinking about is, how do you want to solve it? How do you want to take your experiences, your gifts, your talents, and solve that problem? And so it's important to think about how you take on that problem because there's a million ways to solve a problem and your passions and your guidance and the way you want to solve a problem matters, right? Because if you wanted to solve climate change, for example, People might think that you need to be a scientist or a researcher, but in reality, you might be a brilliant photographer. And the way you can solve climate change is by going out and documenting climate change, right? And then the last question I want you to think about is what do you need to know to solve that problem? What are the skills, the abilities, the knowledge you need to have to solve that problem? And where can you start developing those knowledge, skills, and abilities? And the reason why this is important is because it opens up the world not to think about jobs, but think, to think about experiences and skills you can build. Because if you wanted to solve climate change through photography and you realized that you needed to be a writer to do that because you wanted to write blogs about it, then you probably should find work that helps you develop your writing skills. And it doesn't matter what industry it is because you are going to be developing those skills. And so for me, when I got to understand it this way, when I graduated from graduate school at Arizona State University, there was no Google. So I couldn't plan to work at Google when I graduated from graduate school, right? So if you think about that, what company, what areas are going to exist in 15 years or 20 years that aren't, don't exist today? So it's more important to build the skills, the knowledge, the abilities that you need. So you could be using this time to develop wherever you are in that pipeline, whether you know what problem you want to solve or whether you know how your passions and skills align with that problem, or you need to find out what skills you need to develop and how you can start developing those skills. And ASU is a great place to either, you know, use the career services or go take a class or find the experts. You know, ASU is, if nothing, just a bunch of experts that can help you figure out 
what it is that you need to know to solve the problems you're passionate about, right? So, so that's what you could be spending your time on. That's one. The second thing that you could be spending your time on right now as you think about the future is start lining up with people. Start figuring out your tribe, the people that are passionate about the same things that you're passionate about. Reach out to them. I can't tell you how many missed opportunities alumni might have when I don't get, I don't get an email from someone that says, Hey, you know, my name is Tammy and I live in Phoenix and I'm also interested in education and I want to work in the education and technology space. I'd love 15 minutes of your time to talk. I'm going to say, yes, most people are going to say yes. Most people are going to say absolutely. So how you provide value to the people you reach out to is really critical. So we can spend a whole day talking about the skills around networking. And so this is a great opportunity. And I know I got only a couple of minutes left and I'm going to be able to answer any questions or feel free to reach out to me either on my YouTube channel or LinkedIn or, or Twitter, but understand that every crisis is an opportunity. And what we're faced with is a completely new future. And you, whether you are just graduating from school or whether you're still in school and going to graduate next year, you just graduated a couple years ago or a couple years ago. You have to understand that right now where we are is we're facing a bunch of transformation that's happening. And this is a great opportunity to think about what that transformation looks like to think about the skills that you need and how you want to take on those problems. And I'll give you my personal problem, right? So I'm a first generation American, born and raised in Hell's Kitchen, New York. I grew up with a single mother. I grew up on welfare and food stamps. And the problem that I'm trying to solve is, is based on an assumption because I could either assume that I was able to graduate from college and go to graduate school and work for Google for 14 years. I could do those. I did those things because I'm a super genius and I have a 500 IQ and that's what my wife thinks I think, or there are millions of students who are just like me who don't have the same opportunity or might not have that luck or might not have the access that they need. And so the problem that I'm trying to solve, is to provide that access, to provide those opportunities. And again, that problem can be solved a million different ways. It can be solved through education in K-12. It can be solved through programs that support students in K-12. It can be, it can be supported in college and teaching kids like me how to create social capital. It can be solved in a business world by creating in inclusion and diversity programs that focus on, on imposter syndrome, for example. So there's a million ways to solve that problem. And so I'm trying to take it on from lots of different ways. And so for me, that problem is going to, probably until they put me in the ground, is gonna be something that I'm gonna continuously focus on from lots of different angles. And so find that passion, find that thing that you are, that the problem that you wanna solve, and then think about how you wanna solve it. And then develop the skills. This is a great opportunity to narrow down that problem and the skills that you need to develop to focus specifically on that skill. And I know I'm running out of time, so I'll pause there and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you guys have. I'll check through the chat box and see if there are any questions in there. Yeah, Jamie, thank you so much. Um, absolutely include some questions for him right now. Um, so you all can get those answered by uh, Jamie. All right, I'll say one more thing while, while we transition to the, the, to the next thing that we want to focus on. I think that it's important to think about how we support each other as an alumni network, how we support each other through all this. And the best way you can do that is by creating a resource group, right? To create, in the education space, we call them uh, personal learning networks. And in other areas, you don't see that so much. So what educators do, and this is a great tool that should be across lots of different industries, is teachers form their personal network, their personal learning community. And it's five or six people that they surround themselves with, either on social media or LinkedIn, on Twitter, and, and they all help each other 
answer questions or hey does anybody know about this or they 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 pay attention to whatever tweets you know they create alarms for their tweets or their posts on linkedin and that's a great way to create a community so i think this is a great opportunity for us where we are today to be able to reach out to each other create those like personal learning communities because at the end of the day you know learning and education is not a process it's a mindset lifelong learning is what you need to do i remember when i was done with graduate school at Arizona State University back in the olden days when I hit uh, print on my last paper on the Word Perfect 5.1 and sent my paper to the dot matrix printer. And I remember sitting there thinking, I am done. I don't have to do this ever again. And that wasn't true 25 years ago. It's definitely not true today. And so what is it that you need to learn? How do you continuously learn? And how do you reach out to that personal learning network that you can build to continuously learn and grow. That's awesome, thank you, Jamie. It looks like we have uh, some questions in the chat here for you. Um, we have a question here um, about Google being in classrooms even after um, what is happening because a lot of K-12 teachers have been referring to this. Um, so what do you see the future of Google education in K-12 classrooms? Yeah, so, so, what I, so by, for those who are alumni and, and don't know this because the history is not very clear on this, Google Apps, what we used to call Google Apps is now G Suite started at Arizona State University. ASU was the first major university to jump on board. And this was innovative and risky and, and strategic and all those things back in 2006. So ASU is, a, is the catalyst for what we call today G Suite, where a mil, hundred million students are using this, these tools across the world. So it started at ASU. And, and so then it was just two of us. The, the Google for Education team was just two of us. And today, it's, it's a whole functioning unit inside the organization to the point where I, I can't even cause any more damage. You know, for a long time, it was just two of us and then it was five of us and now it's hundreds of engineers and process people and strategy people and Salesforce people and a whole bunch of different people that are working on this. And so if you can see the reaction that we've had to COVID and how they were able to create a resource page. If you go to a Google for Education page, there's a whole bunch of resources there for COVID and teaching at home or learning at home and for parents and for educators. And the engineering team were, were able to add the features that were needed right now as distance learning was practiced. You know, if this happened, you know, back in 2010, for example, we would have fell apart because it was literally two of us. And so that commitment that the organization has to education and the engineers that are building products and services is only going to continue to grow. So I'm excited to see how we can help. And I think this has been a great opportunity to listen to the education community and hear what are the essential things, the most important things that we need. And those things have clearly come out. That's great. It's so true, especially um, what's happening right now across social media and different campaigns that we're seeing. So that is really helpful to see. Um, Jamie, we have a couple uh, questions that are around the same theme, how you mentioned about solving that problem, right? And yeah. knowing what to wake up for every day. So, you know, we have a couple people in here that, you know, they're, they're five to 10 years into their career. And what advice do you have on just that, that simple question of what to be when you grow up? Yeah, so, so again, I think, look, I'll tell you, this is a true story. I, was, I had a friend who was a HR executive 10 years into her career, and she was making a bunch of money, was really good at what she did, but was miserable. You know, was not engaged with her work like 70% of Americans are, was not really buying into where, I'm not going to mention where she was working, but it just wasn't a passion for her. It wasn't doing anything for her. So she's working 16, 18 hour days doing the kind of HR work that she likes, but not necessarily for the organization that she was working with. And what she realized when we talked about this and like, you know, I feel stuck and I don't know what to do and all these other things that came up, what she realized is that at home she had four rescue dogs. And at times she's had up to six or eight where she would foster rescue dogs. And her, what she realized is that she loves 
the whole idea of animal sanctuaries and she loves the idea of helping shelters and rescuing dogs and all that's where her passion was and so what she was able to do is transition herself from that role where now she started helping um, humanity organizations and working with shelters and working with you know breeders and helping them with their HR stuff right creating recruitment plans and helping them create the right HR policies for them so she turned into a consultant working in HR which she's good at and which her passions were to help an area that she was passionate about which was dog rescue and sanctuaries and those types of things so it's finding that right combination of what are your talents what are you good at what are the things what are what do people count on you to do and how do you blend that into the things the problem that keeps you up at night or the thing that the thing that catches your interest right when you're going through medium or when you're reading through the web where do you stop what draws your attention where do you dive deeper into and being able to find those two combinations and solve that problem that you don't even know you might want to solve and a lot of people never get a chance to think about it that way and once you spend some time and this is not something that just happens in a minute you got to spend some time really diving deep and, and, and doing some reflection and thinking about that. Yeah, absolutely. And to that point, Jamie, we had a question here about, you know, I'm in a program or I'm in a certain job where I'm not able to really have diverse skills built. Mm -hmm. um, so if they wanted to, you know, do it on their own and look for skills, um, you know, outside of their program or outside of their career, uh, what would be a great way to get started? So, so uh, on, on my YouTube channel, you'll find one of the videos that I, I made was about being busy. And the point of the, it was supposed to be a little bit funny, but the point of the video is that you're not really busy. We like to say we're busy because it's like a status thing, but we're not really busy. You know, you have to look at where your time is being spent, right? So if you're spending time binging on Netflix, you might not be busy. And I'm not saying that this person is, I'm just saying that there are spaces where you can find time to do this. The other thing is an idea of self-awareness. What aren't you good at? But not saying I'm not good at X, saying I haven't learned how to do it yet. So for example, if, if I, I hear adults say all the time, I'm not very creative. I'm not good with finance. Well, no, the, my response back to those folks is that you've chosen not to be creative and you've chosen not to be good with finance because what you need to do what you need to do is out there. You can learn in so many different ways. And so, you know, when I launched my YouTube channel, I knew nothing about videography. I knew nothing about film. I knew nothing about editing film, none of these things. And my daughter who graduated from ASU in film, she has a degree from Herberger. I said to her, hey, where do I start? Just like, I started with, I don't know, right? And being okay and being aware that I don't know. And instead of saying, I can't learn, I said, where, where do I start? And she said, okay, listen, start here. You know, shoot at 24 frames per second, double your frame rate, keep your ISO at 100. And if you go outside, you might need an ND filter because the light going through the aperture is gonna blow everything out. You're not gonna be able to see anything. You don't wanna speed up your shutter because it creates everything and it makes everything look robotic. That's where she's like, start there. You don't need to shoot in 4K, just shoot in 1080. And I said, cool, thank you for that information. Okay, here's my second question. What the hell do any of those words mean? Nothing, I knew nothing. And from that knowing nothing, I said, I'm going to learn. And I used, even though I'm a pretty busy person, I had a day job, I traveled 300,000 miles a year, except now I'm not, and that's a whole other problem. But I travel 300,000 miles a year. I'm always on the road. I'm always busy. I work for one, a major tech company and I still found time to learn how to shoot film, how to edit film, how to put it all together, how to create music and put it in there and, and do all this. And if you look at the first video, it looks like a hostage video and now it looks better and it's only going to get better. And this is mindset that you can learn anything and it's just a pro it's just a matter of spending the time to do it and if you can convince yourself that you can learn anything then it's just a matter of finding the gaps in time where you can take on any skill that you want to develop and get good at it that's great and jamie how would you recommend like uh on a resume or in a cover letter like explaining that you're always excited to learn and the different skills that you learn on the side is that something that you could put on your resume or in an interview 
Yeah, I th- I think it comes out right. I think I think a lot of the times when when you when you when you know the advice that I give for interviews and and for resumes is to to look at a resume and ask yourself is this is this a history book or is this a potential right? Is this is this like something that I can present to someone and it says these are all the things that I know how to do, but more importantly, I'm open in to learning lots of different things, right? And so being able to say things like if I was creating my resume, it would say 14 years at Google. And in between that, I started a school uh, here in Phoenix. And in between that, I started a YouTube channel and it has this many subscribers. And in between that, I started this. Like, that's clear. I don't have to say I'm a learner. I don't have to say that I like to develop new skills. It's clear, right? And so being able to showcase that on a resume or being able to showcase that in an interview, and the way I would do that with an interview is when you're interviewing for jobs, don't just focus on the experience of other jobs, right? Because what most organizations are looking for, they're looking for, you know, leadership skills. They're looking for problem solving skills and learning things is not just at work. You can mention your hobbies or you can mention where you learn how to solve a problem or how you collaborated with someone on some passion project that you had. So it's more about the skills. Again, back to this idea that you're learning and developing skills not jobs. And if you continue to develop those skills, those skills are the ones that are transferable into lots of different opportunities. Wonderful. Jamie, first of all, thank you so much for being here with us. Um, It's been incredible working with you on this um, and sharing your story. We did have some questions that we weren't able to get to this evening. Um, I'll take a look at this way. That would be fantastic. I'll take a look at those, but my message button on Twitter, it's just at J-C-A-S-A-P that button is open. So feel free to ping me on that. Um, I'm also message button is open on, on LinkedIn and, and you know, you can leave me comments on my YouTube channel. I'm pretty accessible. I'm out there. I, I try to pick up as much as I can as I peruse the social media world. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Jamie. We really appreciate it again. Thanks for having me. Thank you.